Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to WFSO Reaction. Um, this is gonna be talking about the Bucks. Um, I only saw like you know halfway point to the video, and I was just like thinking, like, yeah, I need to talk about this. Um, the video is by Eddie Buckets, and I did see some points that he made on here that I agree with. So I just thought, wait a minute, we need to talk about this. Um, this in this video. So um. He talks about basketball, but if y'all want to check out his channel, go check him out. Um, subscribe to his channel. But um, yeah, um, just you know, this the Milwaukee Bucks need to make a trade ASAP, which is very true. They do, they do need to do something, especially like trying to help the defense. They, you know, really, really need that. So it's like, um, what can they do to try to um buff up the defense? Because you know, like Damian is trying and maybe pull out a couple of steals here and there, but as for you know Malik Beasley is he's not a good defender, and that's why you know the I don't know you call it the um front court or whatever, but um yeah the front court is not you know not getting nowhere but the i think they called like the forwards and centers the front court and they called the um, guards the back court so i'm sorry y'all let me just look at this for a little bit um okay um other videos up um I'm sorry, y'all. I know this is like kind of like a little bit of a waste of time me looking at this, but I think you know they call their guards the back court, and I thought they call their um forwards the front court. So I get the two re um confused. So no, can't vote, but. Let me see there, I'll show it. Okay, yeah. The forwards and centers are front court and the guards are um back court. So our back court is trash. It really is. None against Damian Lillard. I know he's trying, but our um back court is trash. So Maybe they do something to defend, and plus, Brook Lopez is look like he's getting a, a little bit slower, or they just don't have the right defensive scheme for him to be successful. He's still second in the NBA in blocks, so don't get me wrong. And like, it's I think his scoring is a little a little bit up there than it was last year, I believe. But um, yeah, we need defensive help. And bench help too, because we really don't have that much of a bench. But I know we got some of the young guys that's like up and coming. But like Jay Crowder is injured, but he's supposed to be back probably on Sunday's game against Sacramento. So we'll see if that happens. And um yeah, in the next two games we got um got Boston today and we got um Golden State on Saturday both games at home so yeah it's gonna be uh tough two games and it's gonna be like the ultimate test is like if they need to make some moves so um in the back half of the video i didn't see all of it but i just saw like parts of it because he got different tiers of like people that the bucks should trade for but um we're going to try to work something out, probably do like some trade videos and be like, oh, okay, maybe you'll try to get this person and get that person. So, like I said, a lot of videos coming in the next couple of days. And I wasn't planning on making that many videos, but, you know, things pop up. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this. Yeah, they let me play it. Okay, that's weird. Let's try this again. 
go back and play. Bucks this season. Let's go through this. It started on opening night when Tyrese Maxey gave the Bucks 31. Sorry, y'all. Just trying to turn some of this down, man. And it just froze on me. This is got a lot of stuff going on here, and maybe I can try something. Just boot something out for a while, and hopefully that will come. Losing. Trey Young there gave us go. 20 points and gave the Bucks their first out on a close win. Then Jalen Brunson went and did Jalen Brunson things, like torched the Bucks' shitty perimeter defense. And then Cam Thomas wanted in on that 45-point actually snuck a win out 120. You know, 118. Hal Burton, sorry, I meant to say the Bucks owner, dropped a casual 29. We caught a break down here. Scotty Barnes gave us 29. Lamella Ball gave us his season four points against us. Cool actually decides to have somewhat high efficiency only against the Bucks, and Mr. No Left Hand gave us 26 points. We caught a break here. Trey Young gave us 32. Bruns another day in the office. A wash DeMar DeRozan gave us 41 points. Mm -hmm. Another lucky stretch here. Kelvin Johnson gave us 28. Franz Wagner gave us 29. You know, the way you can't see the Milwaukee Bucks defense. Mm -hmm. Didn't know you need the whole Milwaukee Bucks team to fly out to Cleveland to do cone drills. Donovan Mitchell. Flashback to when the Nets drafted their top eight players and Dennis Smith Jr. Once again, we're letting the Spurs perimeter players violate us. And the Bucks still lost this game. The Bucks perimeter defense sucks. It's no secret that the Bucks defense is perimeter defender in the league in Drew Holiday. The Bucks defensive rating went from fourth place last year at 111.9 to 19th place at Wonderful. You have the runner up defensive player of the year from last year, a former defensive player of the year, and you still find a way to rank in pretty much the bottom third of the league in defense. The only reason why the Bucks are still a top three team in the East right now is because Giannis is being Giannis. If the Bucks want to have any chance of contending for the 2024 NBA championship. They're going to need to make some sort of move before this trade deadline. So we're yeah. going to go over potential trades the Bucks can make. Of all the possible players the Bucks could acquire before this year's trade deadline, I've grouped them into three tiers. Tier one is the best possible scenario for the Bucks. The fit in, the players are cheap enough to acquire vendors that can also space the floor, to be honest. Tier two are players that are still an upgrade for the Bucks roster, but it's more likely just going to be the remainder of the season for the player, and it's not that big of a risk for the Bucks to get into. Think of PJ Tucker in 2021 for the Bucks. He did did his role in winning the championship and then just dipped. And then tier three are like the safety options for the Bucks. If they can't get a tier one or tier two guy, these players will most likely be available, but aren't certainly guaranteed upgrades. So to start us off here in tier three, ironically, we have PJ Tuck Warriors for $6.3 million, Daniel House Jr. for $4.3 million, and Isaac Okoro from the Cavs for $8.9 million. PJ Tucker, in my opinion, is definitely the lowest option on tier. He's 38 years old right now and is only... He played 15 games this season, averaging 1.3 points a game. Obviously, if the Bucks signed him, it would only be to try to get another ring, and he'd be out by the summer. Definitely a if all else fails option. The second worst option here is probably Daniel House Jr., who's another 3 and D wing that plays for the 76ers right now. He's getting limited minutes in the current day. He's only he played 22 games this year and is averaging 3.4 points on 34.4% efficiency from three. The next best option on here is Otto Porter Jr., who played a really big part in the steal a game and shot 40% from three and 49% from the field while only playing around 20 minutes. The playoff experience is nice to have, and he could give you these type of numbers on a run if you really needed them. The last guy we have on here is Isaac Okoro from the Cavs, the Which youngest player on the defender on the perimeter, and has shown steady improvement from the last three or four years in his career. He's probably the only guy in Tier 3 that could actually stay longer than the rest of this year, from the potential he has of being young. Okay, now, now in Tier 2, one. we also have four players. That being Jonathan Kaminga from the Warriors for $6.2 well, million. Danny yeah. Abdiya from the Warriors for $6.2 million. <laughs> Gary Payton the second also from the Warriors for $9.5 million. Dollars. I think Jonathan Kaminga is definitely the most interesting one on here. Recently, he has reportedly given up on Coach Steve Kerr yep. in Golden State after they choked an 18-point lead against the Nuggets. I think it's pretty clear that Kaminga wants out of Golden State with his frustration of playing time, and I think the Bucks would be a decent landing spot for him. Kaminga is definitely a really talented player, but which is kind of what the Bucks need. 
and he can't really shoot well from the outside, being limited as a four spacer, but the talent and potential is certainly there. The next slipped on player we have I want to talk about is Danny Avdia. Avdia has been a super player for the Wizards coming off the bench. He's averaging a hair under 12 points a game, shooting a Mike can get him. That's a possibility. About 35% from 50% from the field while averaging a steal a game. He's having a breakout year so far. On defense, he's a very active two years old. Definitely the most underrated player Bucks to target. The second option for the Bucks would be Gary Payton the second. Just like Otto Porter Jr., Chief in 2022. Gary Payton is similar to Kaminga, a player that could also be looking to get out of Golden State to get more minutes on the contending team. GP2 could be the pass on defense that the Bucks need. Just the sheer defensive intensity, passion, and hustle he brings is exactly what this Bucks half-hearted defense needs. And the final player who I think is the Bucks' best option in Tier 2, is Royce O'Neal from the Nets. When looking at the Nets roster, it's literally filled to the have that are in the rotation right now are Mikel Bridges, Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Anthony Smith, Cam Johnson, Royce O'Neal, and Lonnie Walker IV, who are all in the rotation. Of these seven players I mentioned, there's no shot they get Bridges, and I highly doubt they get Johnson or Dinwiddie, let alone the money would be too much. I think the Nets, out of all these guys, would be willing to give up Royce O'Neal, and I think the Bucks would get enough value to trade for him in the first place. Royce O'Neal would definitely be a great option for the Bucks with his defensive versatility and his ability to get red hot from the I'm sorry, guys. It's, you know, you have to deal with some. Yeah, you two got to make their money too. Oh, come on. Yeah, maybe you probably kind of skipped it a little bit. Maybe you can have some help. Finally. I apologize now about the deadline this year. Once again, we have four players. Matisse Thibel from the Blazers for $10.5 million. Dorian Finney-Smith from the Nets for $13.9 million. Alex Caruso from the Bulls for $9.4 million. And Marcus Smart from the Grizzlies for $18.8 million player over the last year. This season, he's shooting 38% from three on four attempts a game. And is averaging 1.6 deals a game. So yeah. definitely something the Bucks need. Now, remember all the seven wings the Brooklyn Nets have? Well, besides Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Sway, while it would still bring lots of value to the Bucks, Dorian Finney-Smith has proven to be one of the best three and D players in the league. This year, he's shooting 41% from three. Dorian is also one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. I think putting him around Giannis and Dame, while that duo sucks, just like when he was with Luka in Dallas, all he has to do is just hit open threes and play good defense. The second that was one is of probably most. one of the most sought-after players in this year's trade deadline, so it'll be. He's shooting 50% from the field and 42% from three on 3.8 attempts. Once again, very efficient numbers. He's also a steal for the Bucks, especially because he's paid less than 10 million a year. Caruso's defensive intent would definitely help the Bucks. But if the Bucks could get one player to trade deadline, the one ideal fit player that could take their defense up a completely different level and assets to yep. get smart from the Grizzlies. On the Sports Illustrated website, they created an on this hypothetical the Bucks get Marcus Smart while the Grizzlies get Bobby Portis, Pat Connaughton, Marjan Bochamp, and a 2024 second round pick. As you okay. lose another 3 and D player you have, you lose one of your few young rotation players and you lose the draft pick. But to get you would completely shift the energy and the atmosphere of the Bucks defense. You would be the exact player the Bucks would need for this postseason. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments, players, you think the Bucks should try to target this trade deadline. Yeah, like Marcus Smart, Alex Caruso were rumors. And, of course, the recent rumor that was just, like, posted up, I probably said in the last video, was um Dorian Finley-Smith and Royce O'Neal. So they're trying to make it seems like they're going to get two of them. This was like a writer that posted that one up. Um, Jonathan Kaminga, but he'll be like a good like backup center. Um, probably younger and better than Bobby Portis if they want to do something like that because, but then again, Bobby Portis is still young. He's like, he's 29 and same age as Giannis, but that's, he still ain't bad, but like, if they have to, you know, part ways with Bobby Portis, I can understand, but I ain't gonna like it. But I understand it. So, um, if they have to do that just to 
get like a certain player or something like that, then you just have to do that. But um, I think, you know, if Memphis decide to do something like that, um, they'll be, I know they're going to use Bobby Porter's a lot, and, but Pat Connaughton, um, I was one of the people that was like, was high on him at first, but like seeing him as a late, um, he's, he needs to go. Like um, the other like people, like I can see that um, the guy they mentioned from Portland, they probably can easily get him. Jonathan Kaminga, um, Gary Payton the second. I doubted that um, if the um, Warriors would give give him up, because they did a lot to get him. Like you know the year before, no, they actually like traded to get him back last year we ended up going to Portland after that 2022 championship season that they had. So there's just a lot of, you know, question marks to see what the Bucks going to get at the trade deadline. Um, like I said, I'm going to do like a few videos, but doing like um, possible trades and stuff. So if they can probably get Kaminga and maybe Gary Payton the second at the same time, could be something. But um, it was see, like I said, like the other rumors and stuff like that, and things like that as well. It should be interesting, but um, I just think you know there are some players that they won't part with, like with the Alex Caruso. Like the Bulls won a lot, which I don't get why. But um, but I think you know, the Bulls will change their minds and probably will give in to give up Alex Caruso, probably around the trade deadline. If, you know, if nobody called them. Or they'll try and make a deal or something like that. That'll happen. But um, only time will tell. We'll see on February 8th. But um, thank you guys for watching. Um, also, um, if you're listening on to the podcast, um, thank you all for listening. Um, please follow us on Spotify and wherever you get your podcast from. So check out Wrestling Fans Speak Out or just look for us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from. Um, if you, the guys on YouTube, um, thank you for watching. Um, please like the video. It'll let more people know that we're doing like content, like talking about the Milwaukee Bucks and pro wrestling. Um, check our past videos. If you like the content like that as well, um, got plenty. Um, and please subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand uh, subscribers by the end of the year. So hopefully we can get there. They got sponsors art from art. Check them out on Facebook. Uh oh, didn't mean to do that. And moving dudes, um, you're in Wisconsin, Florida, trying to move. You can get them a call, and you can also find them on YouTube. So, four one four eight zero seven four two nine nine. Um, that's it for me. So, thanks again for you guys watching. Until the next video, like I said, there's a stream of videos that's gonna be coming up in the next few days. So please check them out. Until then. You guys have a good one.